as Mr. Tony Litter. <coughs> From your address, you've taken the position that um, by metric verification uh, is not necessarily by uh, FO and fingerprint uh, that um, uh, failure to uh, go through the biometric verification uh, doesn't, uh, you know, have any besetting consequence. Now, uh, looking at <coughs> the provisions, <coughs> I think the yeah, regulation 32, 32, is it, 30, is it 32? Yes, um, <coughs> uh, I find the construction difficult there. Can you read it and uh, tell me exactly what you are containing the true construction of it is? Identif uh, regulation 31. No. Should I read it? Uh? So I could just make the argument. Uh, well, yeah, you can. It All says, right. a presiding officer, 31, presiding officer may, before delivering a ballot paper to a person who is to vote at election, require the person to produce A, a voter identification card, or B, any other evidence determined by commission to establish by fingerprint or facial recognition that the person is the registered voter whose name and voter identification number in particulars appear in the register. And two says the voter shall go through biometric verification process. Now, my Lord, um, as um, doctor, this thing is a bit far from me. As Dr. Farijan testified to in the witness box, the biometric verification is a process. It starts first with the biometric registration, by which biometric data is captured. And he took the court through the processes by which a party is identified for purposes of voting. And that process involves um, taking the card itself which is the process of biometric uh, registration, compare it to the face of the person, and then to check in the biometric register whether or not the person is duly registered to vote. In that register, which is also biometrically generated, the picture of the person is also there. Now, my Lord, the first leg of the argument which I made is this, that the purpose of this process is to identify that a person is eligible or at least qualified to vote. It means that person has gone through a process, has been determined that the person is above 18 and the person can vote. Now the first leg of the argument then is that, that being the case, when the person has been conclusively identified has been qualified to vote, from that point on, his constitutional right to vote kicks in. And therefore, to the extent that there are further processes, after the clear identification, we seek to deprive him of that right. That, those, those processes, in my view, even if it's spelled out in subsidiary legislation, legislation, will be unconstitutional. The argument then goes further. That the biometric verification that we are talking of is actually two ties. One is facial. And as Dr. Faijan testified, 
when you swipe the uh, voter's ID card over the machine, a face is generated. That in itself is biometric verification. And I recall when he was testifying and he was asked about the Odikuro, he was very clear. He says the person has been clearly identified, he's gone through the process, he is swiped and the picture gener is generated. And then you see that because his fingerprint cannot be uh, recognized by the um, uh, machine, he should not be allowed to vote. And he said that there's a discretionary authority or power in the uh, presiding officer in those circumstances to allow the person to vote. So again, our, right, the argument I was seeking to make, Your Lordship, is that fingerprint verification is not the only method of biometric verification. And therefore, in instances where people's fingers could not be recognized, and in the case of the petitioners that those people were allowed to vote, that would clearly be wrong because they would have been, by definition, biometrically verified. And if you read 31 and 32 together, and, and, and then the argument goes beyond that, which, which is an argument which is based, founded on the Constitution, which guarantees the right to vote, which co this court has, without exception, consistently protect. And we're saying that when you gauge these against that right, a broad interpretation should be given of that session that enables citizens to realize their uh, constitutionally guaranteed rights. I have just um, drawn my attention. Our case on the first leg is really that there is no proof that anybody voted with that biometric registration. That's the premises from, from which we start. And then we follow with this argument that, in fact, there is not on record any proof that anybody voted with that biometric registration. So. No. <coughs> Well, you notice that um, anyway, I've heard your your explanation. Uh, uh, but you'll see that uh, 31, if it's to stand the way you have put it, and then 32, uh, be rendered uh, otios. Um, it would be that only if you interpret 32 to refer only to fingerprint verification. Uh, because there is definition of what biometric verification is. No, my lord. The definition is respectfully is the biometric verification machine. Machine. Yes. 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 And 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 there. Uh, <laughs> The purpose of the machine is indicated. Yes, my lord, and uh, that uh, machine oh. is that same machine that generates the facial recognition. It yes. is that same machine. Yes, um, but you see, if you read 32 uh, together with the definition, then you will find that <coughs> the verification intended by 32 and then the definition together uh, fingerprint based. Uh, the assumption is that there's FO if for those whose fingers who don't have fingers and all that uh, have FO and then the other one is finger. Uh, my lord, FOs is determined by the machine itself. FOs yes. is determined. Why would then uh, exception be made for FOs if it's only for fingerprint because FOs assume that you have been facially recognized because the machine no, the, has the generated. The FOs are determined even at the registration uh, stage. Right. Uh, if um, you cannot, your fingers cannot go through, they put you down for uh, verification. That's what I'm doing. Uh, yes, for no. verification through the uh, machine. Yes, my lord, but even FOs are run through that machine. They are. And it's, 
because they are not allowed, they just don't do the fingerprint, but they are verified through the biometric machine because when you swipe their card, facial only. So he says if you swipe the card, then the face pop, pops up. Somebody who is supposed to stop there is a person who has FO. Then he says facial, face only. So if you are not face only, you go forward. You go on to do that. So the, the, it is not, so the biometric uh, identification makes room for people to be identified by faces. But those are the people against whose names FO appears when they swipe their cards. Yes, my lord, I... All the others are supposed to go on. So, if your argument is that even without an FO indicated against your name, you can end the biometric identification there, that will be, you will consider that. If you think that uh, the biometric, bi biometric identification should continue after the facial identification, because anybody, even if you are, let's say, you have, you are, you have, you are impaired, and the FO doesn't appear against your name, you can't, you, you, that, I mean, the, the, you are supposed to continue with the further identification by way of fingers. Yes, my lord, I, I agree with you, but I was referring to that only to the extent that your lordship, the president, referred to the biometric machine as only fingerprint biometric machine, verification machine. And, I, and the point I was making then was that it's supposed to recognize face as well. But the broader argument, of course, which we are making, which is whether or not the, uh, the constitutional arguments still remain valid, we still make those arguments for your consideration.